Guys, the Marvel Snap patch notes have leaked. This is the official Marvel Snap account on a popular South Korean forum. And we're going to go straight into the balance patches and then we're going to look at the rest. The balance patch was supposed to come out today, but it got delayed because of a problem with second in, from second dinner's end. But they've leaked, so we can take a look. Aero has been nerfed pretty mildly. She's gone from a 5.8 to a 5.7. Uh, okay, that nerf is so tiny, it is almost unbelievable. Aero's effectiveness is great for both obstruction and control. Previously, we increased the aero stats to where it is now, but since players have realized how to use it, we thought it might be a good idea to lower the power a bit. This is not enough of a nerf. I think that you could have made aero six cost and seven stats, and she would still be very, very good. Aero is one of the best ways to win a game of Marvel Snap without thinking much. You play her into the location that you're losing, if you're winning the other two, pulling your opponent's card into the lane that they're already winning, meaning that you win the game. I think that this is not enough of a nerf to Aero personally. Galactus has also been nerfed, uh, going from a 6-3 to a 6-2. This seems more reasonable. Even at the highest uh, rank play, decks using Galactus have huge, hu huge cube gains and win rates. Some decks don't explicitly announce that Galactus will be coming, and there are plenty of support cards that some decks find difficult to counter. We're going to lower Galactus' power by one and then evaluate if further changes are needed. I think this seems reasonable. The main issue with Galactus is more the interaction it has with death, in my opinion. Uh, leader's also been nerfed by a point. Many players are picky about leader effectiveness and the ability to stop the game and make it difficult to play other six-cost cards has often been a mixed bag. Uh, we're going to lower the power a bit and see if further modifications are needed later. Now... Worth bearing in mind that it has been the Christmas holiday, so second dinner have probably not been around um, at Christmas break for that long. I think the Galactus nerf is fine by one point, but I must admit, I think Aero and Leader nerfs by a point is pretty underwhelming. I think Leader could have easily gone to one or two power, and I think Aero should be a six cost card, in my opinion, because of how powerful her ability is. I don't even think it's a, like, the fact that you can play Aero and a one drop on the final turn is so broken, it is quite unbelievable. So I think this is not enough of a nerf to Aero. Most people don't play Aero in a one drop on turn six because she's just that good, you don't need to. But yeah, this is not enough of a nerf. Like her power is somewhat irrelevant in a lot of situations, but then she's also got a massive body. Like her, this is not enough of a nerf, no way. Um, Nova's gone to a 1-1. One, one. That is really interesting. Uh, so it's been nerfed by a point. Nova's effect is much stronger than other one cost cards. So we didn't think it was appropriate for Nova to have the average stats of one cost card. I actually agree with this change. And this is a nice change. Uh, Nova doesn't see that much play. Um, it does see a decent amount. It doesn't seem like super broken. But yeah, like, you destroy Nova, and that's where you get the payoff. You shouldn't also just get a two-cost card if you don't destroy it. I think this is a, a nice change, to be honest. Drax has changed as well. Um, it's gone from a 4-4 four, four appears. If your opponent played a card in the zone, give it plus four power. To a 4-5. If your opponent has played a card in the zone, give it plus three power. So this is actually a bit of an interesting one. It's a nerf to Absorbing Man synergy with Drax. Because previously, Absorbing Man's buffing by four with Drax. Now it's only buffing by three. Uh, but it's better if you miss the prediction. So it's definitely a buff to Drax overall, for sure. Uh, it's got a lower floor and the ceiling has stayed the same. It's still playing for eight points. The only downside is the synergy it has with Absorbing Man, which is very, very niche. Although it is going to be popular in Zabu decks, I would imagine. Uh, Groot, 3-3, three, three, appears. If your opponent played a card in this zone, give it plus three power. It's now going to be a 3-4 and you get two power. So the same change of Groot. Groot's still playing for just six points if you get the prediction right. But if you get the prediction wrong, it's playing for four points instead. So a buff the Groot as well, just a very small one. While you may think the Guardian's effects will create a lot of fun, it can also feel like an all-or-nothing game. We hope to increase Drax and Groot's base stats to lower the risk of playing cards and increase their attractiveness in the three and four cost card slots. Yeah, definitely like the change for Groot. I think Drax one is a bad time because of the synergy with Absorbing Man. This makes Absorbing Man worse than Zabudex, but I think it's fine. I think it's a nice change idea. Really cool that Hazmat's been buffed, in my opinion. Hazmat's gone from a 2-1 to a 2-2. We know there's some powerful-looking Hazmat combo decks, but Hazmat's overall performance is not good. So in this update, we wanted to raise it slightly. Love it. Black Cat has also got a buff. I think this is much deserved. I think Black Cat's one of the worst cards in the game. She's gone from a 3-6 to a 3-7. So she's a more appealing option in a Hella deck now. She's the card that's just discarding from your hand if you don't play her on turn 3. Nakia also getting a buff is much deserved. We think Nakia's effect is an interesting mechanic, but it currently has a very low success rate. We want to buff up a bit to make it a more attractive option. So Nakia buffs two cards in hand by two, so she's now playing for six points for three with some potential synergies with the hand buff stuff. 
So I think overall, these balance changes are underwhelming. However, however, it is important to not underestimate how significant point nerfs can be. I do think Leader probably could have got a couple of points and gone to two. I do definitely think that Aero nerf is nowhere near enough. I think Aero is probably still the best card in the game. Um, I think the Galactus nerf is fine, but again, it's not really addressing the issues long term. I think the main issue with Galactus is the the synergy it has with Death, being able to just put like this this twelve point card in for nothing. Um, but it does say they're going to evaluate and see if further changes are needed. Similarly, as well, um, they've said here with Leader. Uh, we're going to see if further modifications are needed later. Let's also not forget, these are the balance patch notes for the patch that was supposed to come out today. So maybe they might even end up changing this a little bit because this just, especially the arrow one, doesn't seem enough. And I know the leader one, people are going to want to see it nerfed by a little bit more. Zone update. Now if there's a Professor X in Oscorp Tower, the card will not change faction. Makes sense. Updated text for Wrath and Vibranium. I've decreased the chance of Warrior Falls appearing. I think that's a good one. This was showing up too much. There's a bunch of bug updates. There's a bunch of lists of known issues. Let's also then take a look at the bits above, the general things. Patch highlights, new feature, artist credits. You can now view the illustrator's information by clicking on the variant name above the card in the collection. That's a lovely change. General update, automatically filter your favorite variants when editing your deck in the collection view. Now, if the section where multiple cards trigger each other is too long, we're looking at you, Hazmat. The time it takes to finish the loop automatically increases. I mean, Wong, Onslaught, Mystique, Ironheart. That's a really nice change. Just going to speed it up. Orca is being added to the game in Series 4. It was supposed to be in the game already, but it didn't get added. Orca is basically a Namor, but for 6 costs. Um, if it's in, on its own in the lane, it buffs up. I think it plays for 12 points total if it's on its own in the lane. Don't think it's a particularly good card. Russian sports been added for new players who want to get started right away. We are releasing a pro bundle available for a one-time purchase only. It includes 12,500 credits plus boosters to upgrade eight common cards to infinity. So this doesn't look like it's going to be available for everyone, but just for new players. If this is available to everyone, it could be worth picking up. Now the number of collo collector tokens received by collecting all series three cards with collector treasure will change. Individual payout tokens are not set at 400, but will be 200 to 600. However, the token acquisition rate remains the same. Okay, so a buff to collector tokens once you've collected all Series 3 uh, cards, which is nice. At the moment, you either get 100 or very occasionally 400, but now the minimum you can get is 200 and you can get up to 600. So you're still getting the same, you're still going to get collector tokens as frequently in boxes, but the average number of collector tokens that you're getting is increasing. So that's really nice. More collector tokens is definitely much welcomed. Nice that we're going to have a new card basically added to the game, Orca, although it's not a particular good one. There's also some audio. Um, air, air, arena sounds, location sounds, Asgard and Daily Bugle. Aero and Polaris have got new audio and also Aero has got new visual effect. Uh, so overall, my take on the balance changes are I'm going to give it a... 5 out of 10. I think it's basically the minimum. Um, Aero got nerfed. This is this is my biggest issue. I think the leader nerf is, is good. I think it could have gone to 2. Aero for me has not been nerfed anywhere near enough. I would actually like to see Aero get nerfed to 6 cost. And her power be 7. Or even more. I think she will still be really good. I have a feeling that like Aero is just a busted ability. I really, really do. Galactus nerf, I think is fine. And yeah, it's good that they're going to keep tabs on it, guys. It's important to remember the second dinner have been on a Christmas break. The fact that we're getting such a hefty balance change, I think we should give big credit to them. Um, yeah, they've been away for like two weeks. So come on, let's let's be pretty respectful here and understand that. I like the Nova change. The Drax and Groot change are much welcomed. Um, I do think Groot in particular could maybe have gotten a bit bigger buff. Hazmat, Black Cat and Nakia buffs are all nice, but not particularly big. I mean, a point on Hazmat's big, a point on Black Cat's kind of big. I don't know if she's quite worth playing in any deck yet, though. And I think the same with Nakia. So overall, I give this a 5 out of 10. I'm very happy to see all the cards nerfed that got nerfed. I'm very happy to see all the cards buffed that got buffed. Uh, but I just think that they could have gone, particularly on Aero and Leader. That's going to be obviously what most people are talking about. Um, because they have survived and they're still going to be two of the strongest cards in the game for the next month. However, it already says they're going to just see how it goes and maybe change moving down the line. Let me know, guys, in the comments what you think about the balance changes. Do you think that Marvel uh, Second Dinner have done enough? Also, collector tokens getting buffed. 
that's a nice change if you've got all, all three cards because it's so slow. Um, so yeah, just, just to confirm, the token acquisition rate remains the same. So whether this means that you're getting the same amount of tokens in the long run, I don't think... Bear in mind, this is Google Translated. I'm pretty sure what this is meaning is that you're getting tokens from caches as frequently, but the average number of tokens you get is going to be higher because you can't get 100 tokens anymore, right? Because otherwise they would be changing the way collector caches work entirely. They would need to add like more avatars and you'd be getting boosters and stuff most, more often. So I'd imagine they're not changing the, the token drop rate because that would also have an impact on all the other things and that's not been mentioned. So my understanding is this might be a bit of a, a translation error, unsurprisingly, considering we're reading the Korean, South Korean patch notes. My understanding is, I would guess that you're getting them as frequently. It's just that the amount that you get is going to be higher on average. All right, guys, thanks again for watching the video. Give it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks.